Hey y'all, uh, today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different from what I normally talk about. As you've noticed, you probably noticed, there's a lot of circles in the TF2 community that enjoy creating custom weapons, and that's totally cool. Like, I, I can totally appreciate the joy of creation, and all the thought that goes into making a new cool weapon, but game balance and design is one of those industries where you see it and that does not help you learn it. Like, if you read a good novel, that's not going to teach you how to write a good novel. If you play TF2, you are not automatically a Valve employee. Unfortunately. <laughs> that would be cool. And I felt that with my limited knowledge, I decided to do a short video explaining four tips of mine for weapon balance. Uh, designed to let you see past the black and white of stats and more into the psychology and philosophy of balance. So, first off, I want to say that it's really not the stats that matter. It's the change that this weapon makes to the game environment. The stats can be easily patched. It's been done hundreds if not thousands of times before by Valve. The stats are clearly not as much of a problem. However, a bad weapon concept that alters the game in a way it shouldn't be altered is pretty much undoable. Because you can't destroy that weapon's niche easily. It's, it's been added, it's probably going to stay there. And uh, that has to do especially with the class roles. A good example, well the most obvious, is you don't want to give a class something that clearly belongs to another class. The heavy is not a sniper, he should not have a sniper rifle. I don't think anyone imagined heavy with a sniper rifle. That would be kind of funny, but it wouldn't be good for the game. A uh, less obvious distinction is the enforcer that I'm looking at here. I'm gonna bash it several times in this video. It allowed the spy to fight much like a combat sniper or a combat engineer. And in doing so, it kind of blurred the class lines. And that might not sound super um, bad, but TF2 revolves around nine individual classes who each provide their strength and strengths and weaknesses to the team. If TF2 became a game where you'd pick a class and then choose the weapon that suits your playstyle the most, out of a very broad range of playstyles, then it would become more like you have a single class that you can customize. So if I if I wanted to be fast and powerful in combat, I would equip, like, a revolver on a scout. If I wanted to be bulky and powerful in combat, I'd equip a revolver on a spy. No, not the spy. Sorry. Thinking, well, uh, it's talking again. The heavy is what I meant. Or maybe the soldier. See, that's, that's completely alien to TF2's gameplay mechanic, and what keeps the game unique is maintaining the class divisions. You don't want a primary for the spy that allows him to act like any other weaker combat class, is what I'm saying. Another example, you don't want um, a secondary for the scout that allows him to act sort of like a suicide picking class, almost like a spy might be. I'm looking at the Criticola right here, if it wasn't obvious. And then, you also want to think about weapons that maybe aren't fun to play with or against. A good example of a weapon that wouldn't be fun to play against would be the one that relies entirely on randomness. Say it has a 25% chance to instantly murder you where you stand, and a 75% chance to do nothing. That's not going to feel really fun to play against, because it wasn't any measure of skill or even other your team's skill that determine that death on your part. It was just random number generator, which happened to pick a 25 instead of a 99 or whatever. And then another weapon that's actually in the game, it's less obvious than that example, 
Brass Beast. Scottish Resistance, too, actually. Both of them rely on kind of boring gameplay where you're going to stand back, um, kind of just waiting, watching, standing vigil. It's not exactly entertaining, and so if you want to play with this weapon, you're kind of giving up some of your fun to use its bonuses. That should never happen. Ever. I know it sounds like I'm being a little bit draconian here, but you have to understand. This is game. It is for fun. If you aren't getting the maximum fun, then it's a bad choice. And then, another point. Let's rag on the Enforcer again. Weapons need to work with each other. They need to be open-ended. The... Um, part of what I'm talking about here is the item packs that were removed in the July 2013 update. Simply because they encourage using weapons with each other, and such as such made it kind of stale, and didn't open up for much diversity in the gameplay. Another good example of this would be the Enforcer right here. The old Enforcer worked very well with the Dead Ringer because the nature of the Dead Ringer's cloak offset the Enforcer's downside. As such, it was both overpowered with the Dead Ringer and encouraged a stale meta. At that time, you could kind of assume that if someone was running the Enforcer, they were also running the Dead Ringer, and sometimes vice versa. And You've heard me rag on the degreaser most likely if you're a regular to the channel. Essentially, what the degreaser did was alter the balance simply because it works, it's designed to work with other weapons, and certain weapons it raised the viability of much more than to a, to a level where they were overpowered once the degreaser was added. And either they should have been rebalanced for the degreaser, assuming that the degreaser would be good enough to use it with them all the time, or have the degreaser not be added. Mm, I'll rant about that another time, but you, you get what I mean, right? You need to keep the meta fresh by encouraging special, encouraging loadout variation as opposed to uh, Dr. Enforcical or an item set or whatever. And my fourth point, covering a class's weaknesses. The Enforcer is a small, small um, variation to this, in that it gives the spy a powerful self-defense weapon, or it gave at the time it was added, when the spy was seriously needing self-defense. And Valve has stated before in a blog post, I believe it was the same one where they removed the item sets, that they prefer to, rather than having a class account for its own weaknesses, no, it wasn't. It was the one they posted shortly before Love and War. That's it. Yeah. Um, rather than have a class cover its own weaknesses, like having a counter to the counter, like the Spicicle is a good example, rather than having a weapon of that kind that basically allows the spy to fight off his counter on his own, or at least avoid. They prefer to have a team effort, where the team covers each other's weaknesses. There's no place where this is better explained than with the Engineer. The Engineer has access to the Pompson, and the Pompson 6000 and the Short Circuit. Both of those are specifically designed to counter all four of his counters. The Short Circuit counters soldiers and demomen, while the Pompson 6000 counters spies and medics. And all of that requires no input from the um, no input from the engineer's team. And then it would be much better for and healthier for the team experience if there was just a class that could you know help the engineer like that. Maybe nullify projectiles, blast away ubers, spy check. I'm talking about the pyro. Yeah. Pyro is right there. And uh, that accounts for some of the changes to the short circuit, among other things, in the gunmetal update. Became less effective for, than a good functioning Pyro. So, that's four tips. 
as a TLDR, I'll say classes should have their own niche and that should not be distorted. The meta should remain fresh with new dynamic weapon choices and less, how should I say, ability to predict a loadout based on one weapon in it. Weapons should be fun to play with and against. They shouldn't feel punishing or boring. And weapons should encourage team play rather than covering a weakness all on their own. There. That's my four cardinal tips for TF2 balance. I, uh, I understand this video might not reach a huge audience at the very first, but I'm going to make an effort to spread it, because... I really, really freaking love balancing TF2, and if anybody else can share that joy with me, I am 100% on board with that. Until next time, folks.